anyway, let me go. This is also a control line endurance model, this other one when I was 13, but, but the, the big one was, let me just continue on here. Okay, the WAM contest. I, I went to them uh, from age 13 to 16 up in the Bay Area. Uh, I'm a, a little kid with a flat top over here. Uh, a local guy in our, in our small hobby store used to drive us up there. and We'd leave about 3 in the morning, so we'd drive up to San Francisco for these meets and come back the same day. My dad was a dentist, and he and a doctor and a farmer went out and bought a Bonanza in 1953. And uh, so I ended up doing a, a control line scale model, uh, painted up and, and built like my dad's, like my dad's Bonanza, entered it in the 59 nats, and I think possibly the 60 nats also. Uh, if I can find the cursor, here we go with, uh, with again, this is eight millimeter stuff, so we're not gonna find sound, of the uh, Bonanza and control line scale. 57 when I was 14 years old. And my trophy, of course, you know, gotta get away. Good looking kid, you know, at 14, of course. Okay, um, now this is control line carrier. And again, I wish I had the hovering stuff on here, but I don't. This, uh, this again was a uh, Age 14, I'm up, uh, I'm up doing uh, a control line carrier at, at a WAM meet uh, in the Bay Area. This was before I figured out hovering the model. This is when we just kind of slowed it down with flaps and whatever. And so I'm only flying with one control hand, uh, with one hand left, and you can see I'm drinking there too. I, I, I haven't figured out what the hell it was I was drinking, but. Uh, Okay, uh, the, the first big presence that I had at the Nats was, in, was at Dallas in 1960. I entered just a handful of events in, in 59, but when I was uh, 17, uh, I was off to the Nats with um, uh, nine different events. And I tell you, my memories as growing up, the most phenomenal memories was being out there in those hangars at that naval air facility and where guys were in there all night getting their models prepared for competition next year. I had come from a little town with a tiny little hobby store and that was my whole exposure. And all of a sudden I'm at the Nationals and I'm at a hangar as big as this and there are just lines of tables and guys getting ready for competition, the, the next one, which is really cool. Now, I did, uh, uh, the Nordic tow line gliders. There's an A1 and A2 there. And that was in the days when we'd use, uh, for dethermalizers, we'd, we'd soak this cotton in saltpeter, and you light it off, and it burns real slow, and then it burns through the rubber band, and it flips the tail up. And somebody cornered me after Spaceship One and said, Bert, you did that. That's, that's the same as dethermalizing a Nordic glider. And you know, I didn't, I didn't think of it. But maybe the inspiration is there, but it was subconscious, the, the inspiration to do the feathered reentry, And it was very much the same thing, and you'll see that a little later. But uh, control line stunt, uh, the F-27 uh, um, was, uh, I, I flew that for a couple of years in, in uh, control line scale. And the Guardian that I hovered is actually in this, uh, uh, in this picture down, down at the bottom. It's actually in a configuration after they outlawed me. So I, ha I, I wasn't able to use the bell crank under the tail. Uh, okay. Oh, there's a little bit about the F-27 at the 59 Nats and uh, just, just some old cool pictures. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is the demise of the F-27. I'm in, I'm in control line scale. I've got my own circle, 70 foot lines. And, a, and the next circle over is a group that's, that's launching a jet speed. Remember the Dyna jet speed? Do they still do that? Yes. Okay. I'm surprised, I was going to want to bring a Dyna jet into this demo room over here, and just let these new guys know what real airplanes sound like. <laughs> but anyway, I, could, I didn't see it, 
because I was just lifting off in my F-27 for control line scale, and this kid had launched, got this Dynajet started and launched it, and, when, and you know, when your Dynajet goes around, it goes around real fast. And if it hits you, it'll probably kill you. I mean, it's going, I don't know, well, they were going a couple hundred miles an hour. And he backed into my circle, and I, I caught him with the uh, outboard engine, right, right there. And, uh, you know, I never did find out what happened to him. They hauled him off to the hospital. I hope he's okay. He, he's not here, is he? <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's how I lost the F-27. I, I didn't rebuild it after that. Okay, my very first canard design was a radio control model that I did while I was in college. And uh, this, this happened just after the A-11 uh, which became the SR-71. A-11 was unveiled. And, you know, this is kind of a corny joke, but, uh, you know, it says FX-935 on it. You know, that the first A-11 was FX-934, and it, you know, it's kind of silly, I know. But anyway, I figured that, that, that a front engine, by blowing on the canard, would provide a big pitch change, and I didn't want that. So I put an engine on the back, mounted high, so it would pitch it down. So if you bring both engines up, it, it may not have this big uh, pitch trim change. But anyway, I flew that at, at college. Uh, and then I decided that I'd develop uh, a wind tunnel so I could develop a home-built airplane. You know, I was thinking about the very vegan at the time. So I built my own home-built wind tunnel, which is shown on the, uh, on the right there.